44-year-old Orlando Yule's body was found lying on a street corner in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The police began their investigation into Orlando's death. With no witnesses to interview, they went around the neighborhood looking for surveillance cameras. They were able to locate one camera that showed Orlando being pushed out of a car and the car speeding away. Inside Orlando's pocket, the police found an ATM receipt from earlier that day. The ATM was located inside of a gas station, and there were cameras located on the inside and outside of the building. Footage from the cameras showed Orlando using the ATM and then going outside to the suspect's vehicle. The police knew they had to find the vehicle. However, before they had a chance to look, they got a call about a gray car parked in a garage where it did not belong. The police found the gray car, and inside, everything was soaked in gas. The back seat was partially burned, because the suspects had closed the doors and windows, not realizing fire needs oxygen to burn. The car was owned by a woman named Kiera Walker. And that's where we begin the day. Kiera Walker. Let me say this. If y'all didn't notice, when that man was pushed out of the car, he was still moving. So he passed away on that sidewalk. What did all this happen for? You saw the receipt. $200, but $200 for what? It's such a sad story that we see day in and day out. But see, it seems like when people want money or they need money or they get upset, this is what happens. When you don't learn how to control emotions, when you don't learn how to grow up, when you don't learn that human life is so important, this is what happens. You get your life taken for $200. It's not only is that person's life ruined, Obviously, the people who are close to that individual life is ruined. Everybody who is close to you, their life is ruined. They're going to have to get dragged into all this. All in 20 seconds. Your life has been changed forever. Let's continue. We're going to get over to the part of the investigation when it goes. So they end up interviewing the uh, friend, mom, sister, and that's when they end up bringing her in. So let's go ahead and move forward to that. Thank you. There we go. You are Kara Walker, right? Yeah. Is it just Kara Walker or you got two last names? Two. Well, what is it? Kara Walker Joshua. Walker Joshua. Yeah. All right. Um what we got to talk to you about, Kara, mm. is the shooting that occurred. Mm. Okay. Why my sister on it? Well, we'll get into all that. I got to show you some pictures, too. Uh -huh. um, I think we got an idea as to what happened, okay? Um, but we can't put words into your mouth. All right? Mm. Well, what happened has to come from you. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so that's why we're here. Let's uh, talk about it, all right? Um, got to ask you a couple questions. I ain't trying to piss you off, but I got to ask. Uh -huh. Can you read? Yeah. Can you write? Yeah. Are you drunk right now? Yeah. Are you high? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. All right. I'm going to read you your rights. Have you ever had them read to you before? Yeah. You know how it goes, kind of like on TV? Yeah. Kira, you understand each of those rights? Yeah. That's a yes. Can't hear me. You gotta say it. All right. Realizing that you had those rights, you want to talk to me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a yes. Kara, can you yeah. say it Even at this moment, as you're noticing in this video, she's already starting to fall apart. She knows. Okay. You'll see a clear indication when she knows it's all over, but you can just see her body language is. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. It's just going all through her head. It's all running through her head now. What could I have done differently? Why did I do that? It's all over. I, oh, pictures, he says, why do you have pictures of my sister? They, she already knows they're digging deep. And it, I, I, it's in the moment when you sit here and you're thinking to yourself, why? Why? For $200. I could have let this go. 
they obviously found the body and they're going to find a lot more. Let's continue. And between somebody intentionally shooting somebody and somebody accidentally shooting somebody or somebody struggling with somebody or anything like that. You understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. But I, I can't I can't tell your story. Well, can't you tell the story? No, you can't tell the story. Let me tell you why you can tell the story. You can tell the story. You recognize that dude? What? The striped jacket in the Norway? Mm -hmm. You don't? Mm -hmm. uh, he recognized you. You recognize the car that's at the pump there? This dude in the car is right there. The great Honey G6 with a plate of AEB 9421. That's your car, the car that you drive. I mean, I don't drive. I have car paint though, but okay. Okay. So. He recognizes you. You recognize that car? Old car. Yeah, old car when? A minute. A minute? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Like how long? A minute. Yeah, is it like a week, two weeks, three weeks? What's a minute? A minute. Minute, five, five minutes. So she, you, you sold it this morning. She's trying to figure out at what moment did I see this? Because you have to listen. When you're in the middle of a lie, you have to think to yourself, what makes the most reasonable amount of sense? And now that she knows, there's nothing I can say. There's nothing I can say. I can't say two weeks, three weeks. I can't say a day. It doesn't matter. Whatever answer I give is probably not going to make any sense. And if I give the right answer or if I give anything close to the answer, I'm going to incriminate myself. That's why she has to go. It's been a minute. And that's what <laughs> that's how lies work, man. And especially when you get in these detective rooms, that's what they're trying to get you on. They're trying to get you on the, oh, well, you know what's about to happen. You know what's going on. So when was the last time you seen it? Well, a year? Two years? Three years? Yesterday? You know? It's been a minute, man. Okay. Recognize that car? Mm hmm. You do? Why you asking me that, man? Keep going, keep showing the same damn car. Same car. Okay. So now we're stuck here on the car. So we're going to move forward a little bit when they start getting a little bit deeper in the question when she really starts to fall apart. You? I may have an idea of what happened, but maybe people are lying. Maybe you told them to say this to try to protect you. I don't know. No, what was said? You well, I can't tell you what was said because if I tell you what was said, if I tell you, if I tell you what was said, and then you say, "Yeah, that's what happened," well, then it ain't no good. It don't mean nothing because I put the words in your mouth. You know what happened because you were there, so. If you say this is what happened and it matches up with the other pieces of the puzzle and everything comes together, then it comes together. Then it's the truth. If it don't match up, then it ain't the truth. One thing I didn't mention is that they, her sister had already told her the story is she got, she was in the car, there was $200. She, the man was going to buy some drugs off of her. He decided he wanted less and decided he wanted to go with $40. After that, she ends up getting very upset and she ends up putting two in him. And then that's when you see him getting pushed out of the car and then him slowly losing his life all for drugs. But could this have all been avoided? Obviously, she was upset because she thought she was going to get a $200 payday. But she did not think that he was going to pass away. When she shot him, she was hoping that somebody would get to him before he passed away. Unfortunately, those two shots that she took to his abdominal area ended up being fatal because they could not get to him in time. So it may not have been her intention to take his life, but it doesn't matter. She knew it could have possibly took his life. 
That will all matter here in just a few moments. Then what do you think the DA does? What do you think the judge does? They go by a worst case scenario. Because what do they see? They see cold-blooded killers all the time out there trying to kill people. When can I make a phone call? When you get to county. I can't make one now? Mm-mm. No. Why? Because we don't allow people to make phone calls from here. You can do it at county when you get to county. We don't have phones here. You got a phone? Mm-hmm. Why can't I call my phone? Because it's my phone. This ain't for me, Kara. Yeah, this that's not how this goes. This ain't for me. This is for you. This is, this is about your future. This ain't about my future. What the hell is my phone call? What? What the hell do the phone call? We can't make phone calls from here. Okay? Well, this is for coming. Yeah. Who would you be trying to call anyways? Hmm? Who would you be trying to call anyways? My people see it. My daughter, all right. Now daughter, there it is. Your daughter. She wants to see if her daughter's all right. Remember when I said she was slowly start to break down? We're finally starting to see. Her mind is finally working. Why does she want to know if her daughter's all right? What she really wants to do most likely is to say, I'm going away. I'm going away. And you're not going to see me for a very long time. She just wants to hear her daughter's voice. One final time. Because she knows she's done. No matter what happens. No matter what story she tells. She's going to prison. She's going to jail. She knows that. She knew that by the time she walked in there. She knew it was over. So she wants her phone call before she starts saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to need a lawyer. Or whatever she's going to say at this point. But she just wants to hear her daughter's voice. She just wants to talk to her. That's most likely why she's asking to know if her daughter's all right. She just wants to hear it one last time before she has to hear it behind a glass. You know? We're going to take a step forward here. When we all... The most famous part of this video is what everybody remembers if you've seen this video. Is when that last two to three minutes of her finally breaking down... And you will be able to feel it. You'll be able to feel it. And you'll feel something for her. But know that she is a criminal. But this just goes to show you. In these moments when you sit down and think about it. You think it could have been. A lot of different people. If my life had gone just a tad bit differently. If I had grown up with a certain parents. If I had grown up in a certain environment. Could this have been me? And then you realize. She's soaking all this in. It's like this is my life. And I'm going away. Nothing. I, okay, you didn't do nothing. That's one. Then I got one of your besties. Then I got one of your besties, besties that were there. Then I got your own sister who's saying what you told her happened. Kira, I ain't out to get you. This ain't me against you. This is either done on purpose purpose boom or it wasn't done on purpose there's a big difference there Kiara there's a big big difference and regardless of what you think of me or of MPD the, la the last thing I want to have happen is for somebody to go down for because there's a big difference boom versus not intentional y you know what I'm saying it's a huge difference there Kiara that's what I meant when I said this ain't for me. Well, um, I hope I'm not boring you. Because this is huge. This is huge for you. I want drink. What would you like? I want you to hear the last mumble she makes. Okay, we're going to play that part again. When she goes silent, I want you to hear for that very faint mumble after she goes like, well, 
listen to that last mumble. That is the moment I think she's like, I'm done. I hope I'm not boring you. Cause this is huge. This is huge for you. Can I have drink? What, what you would you like? Some ice water. Ice water. I mean cold. I just want cold. Cold water. Just some water. Yeah. Right. One last time, and then we're gonna go over this whole thing. You, you know what I'm saying? It's a huge difference there, Kira. That's what I meant when I said this ain't for me. Well, um. I hope I'm not boring you. Mm. So she's going to end up taking a smoke break. She's going to blow her lo her last cigarette. And you can see the moments fading from her as she blows it into the sky. Thinking to herself, well, this is where life led me. <clears throat> I know this ain't easy. And you notice she's not even inhaling the cigarette. She's just trying to stall. Because you have to take in these last 10, 20 seconds. And that's where I want to say. She ends up confessing. It's the second degree murder. Meaning that she did do bodily harm knowing that it could take his life. I want to say this. Because the reason I show these videos and the reason I make these videos. I'm not trying to make criminals seem like, oh, they're... They come from this background, kind of like we do with the Joker. You know, when we when we do with all these kind of people, we try to look into their background to see why they are that way. Kind of if you've ever seen the show Gotham, you're like, how did they get this way? Oh, it's because they had a bad father, they had a bad mother. Something tragic happened to them. I don't show them to make this criminal a hero or make them seem like we should give less punishment. What I am trying to show is that easily, easily in these moments, you think about these things and you ask yourself why. I think too many people think short term when they go off and they start, you know, maybe being a drug dealer or maybe they start selling drugs or maybe they start doing this. I understand your environment, but I want you to just think about it for just one second. And if you've been in this situation, you know. Think about down the line. Think about sitting in that detective room. Think about what's going to happen when they tell you, hey, look, we know you were selling. Hey, look, we know what happened to Billy. Hey, look, we know you were there that night. It is so easy to get caught up in our emotions, so easy to get caught up in the <laughs> making the money. We get so caught up in the adrenaline rush and all this stuff. We watch so many stories of people who thought they were just going to have fun. I remember uh, the story of the young woman, if y'all remember, I believe she had went to Miami, right? And in that moment, she got in a fight with her friend. Her friend thought it was just a fight. Her friend thought it was going to end simple. They get into a fight. She ends up hitting the back of her neck on a bed, on a bed frame or a bed post. And that was it. It was at that moment because she didn't get help immediately and they thought it was just all a fight. She was gone. It's in those moments when she was fighting, all her emotions were ready to go. I'm mad. I'm upset. Your IQ is the lowest when you're the most upset. And so now we know. <laughs> In that moment when she was the most upset, her IQ dropped. She wasn't thinking straight. She popped this guy twice thinking he might survive. And he doesn't. She ended up spending 16 years in prison after this. She's still serving time. But 16 years of her life is gone. Her daughter was six years old. She's not going to see her daughter until she's at least 18 to 20 if she gets out early. She's going to miss all of that, all for one moment because she was upset. I just want this to be a lesson to you that when you're upset, understand that your IQ is going to go down. Understand that you cannot think straight. That is why you need to be quiet. That's why you need to go away. That's why you need to walk away from these situations. 
just deal with it. Be upset. That's, I'm not saying you can't be angry. But when you get in these moments, get yourself away from people. Just let the moment happen and go be angry in your room by yourself. Go be angry somewhere else. Go outside. Because when you allow yourself to just give in for just one second, it only takes one second for you to punch somebody and then crack their head on the concrete and they're gone forever. It just takes one moment for you to say, you know, what? I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this bottle and I'm going to hit this dude and it slashes their face. And now for the rest of your life, you've got to pay for that because you assaulted somebody. You cut their face. You damaged them forever. Seven years in the prison. It's just one moment you grab that weapon. Just stop. Walk away if you can. That's all I'm saying. We live in a time, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about just the young generation, talking about my generation and older, where we see all these videos, we see all these things happen, we see people get angry, we see people getting these fights, we see high school kids getting these fights, but we don't see the humanity in it. We just see somebody getting angry, be like, oh, they got what they deserve, or they didn't get what they deserve. But you got to think in that moment, if it was you, and you're the person taking somebody's life, how, how hard that is to deal with that. How hard it is to live with that. I'm not saying that this girl is reformed or anything. But I'm hoping that she, her life has changed from this moment. She made a dumb decision. She took a man's life. She, cre she let the evil take over for just 20 seconds. It took to go boom, boom. All these lives have changed. That's all I really got to say on the matter. I hope her life has changed. I hope things are different now. Um, and I'm hoping she's teaching other young women that this is not the life you want to go down. Because it could be all over in just a couple seconds. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Goodbye.